Well, this isn't Florida, but it is a flea market in Iowa. It's not as cold here as it was in Sioux Falls. We haven't gone that many miles since the last stop, but we went 20 degrees up in temperature. It's almost freezing. I chose to come to Heart and Soul Treasures because it says it's not your typical flea market. I don't know if it has a lot of old things. Everyone said it had bargains in the reviews. We'll find out. Well, some really cool things here. I like the Empoli. I like the Ellie Smith Ewers. I always have been a fan of the Ewers. Wow, and look at you. Blanco Genie bottle. That is cool. 525, but it's got everything. The stopper's in perfect shape. Great color. Tangerine. They've got Empoli on this, but it's actually rainbow glass. It's got the nice little pontal. It's a little too heavy to be Empoli. Unless it's cased like this Empoli, then it weighs more. But that's a pretty piece for 125 anyway. Wow, this is a great piece, the ribbon chair. It does need to be restored, but they said they'll do that for you. It's got travertine on the bottom right out of the late 70s. They're charging 7000 with restoration, but it is a very famous design and amazingly comfortable. I'll look at the upholstery on that guy. That is really cool. With the silver thread coming through, 1600 for the three piece. And a whole lot of really neat swung glass and this Viking glass piece that I have a couple of those. There's a smaller size too, very cute. Well, there's definitely old stuff here, so there's no danger of us not finding things to look at. I see a big fish platter, I see Roseville pottery vases, I see some green iced tea footed stems in the 30s uranium green, and yes, the iced teas are harder to find because they were quite tall. And there's Candace Bergen's brother, Charlie McCarthy. Great modern lamp there in the teak with the tall narrow shade. I always have been partial to those. I think that one has a $650 price on it. So, so far I'm not seeing cheap prices on the stuff that I like. But fair prices, $69 on the Zenith radio is perfectly fine. This one is wood and it says it works. It's a little worn here on the paint, but it has all the knobs, and if it all works, I think I might buy it for $35, because it's hard to find radios now. The Hall China 1930s, things for the old soda fountains, where you'd put the cherries or the peanuts or something like that. Very cute, $30 each. That's a good price for those, really. And this is a 1960s boutonniere pattern by Taylor Smith Taylor. This is very famous in its time. It looks like they've got a whole set. It's very basic. $200 in great shape. Well, this is perfect for Florida. It says it is a 70s boho rattan bamboo plant stand. Well, I'm getting the Laura Caldwell would approve, and I know I do for $12.50. That's going with me. These 1980s steel case office chairs are not bad. They've got a good modern design. A lot of good designers have worked for them. They're definitely 80s. They have the right patent date in the 4 million range on the bottom. I already looked. They're two twenty-five for the pair. Kind of tempting. Robert Maxwell did not do the brush glaze on this. This was done by the decorators at Pottery Craft after Maxwell was no longer involved. But it's only ten dollars, so I'll take it. Those look like Adrian Pearsall chairs. Really cool. So is this orange plaid. And look at the great fake fireplace. Two of them. It is the flea market. You're going to see a variety of things. There's new old and in between. Prices are going to be all over too. 32 on the Viking candy in the red. Only 18 on the very nice Fenton blue basket. Treasure craft, the barrel line. This is what really made them famous. The cookie jar ended up on the Dick Van Dyke show. Here's some fun. This says it's a California server. With this lava type glaze. And, then, and it does indeed say Cal Originals. It is really cool. I'm not sure $110 is a sell it price. On the other hand, $16 on the ashtray, I think, is good. This little piece here should be Francoma. That's a fun look. I like seeing the Indiana lotus poles hung in the macrame, as in the era. 20% off today only. Large beanie babies. I would love to buy the egret. 
by Turner. But I can't afford it. Even at 260 it's more than I would get for it. It's a nice American walnut in modernist styles. For people looking for this sort of a look without spending big money, you can find some neat stuff in here. I like this with the hourglass shapes. Crawler, 275. These are going to be walnut, typically, instead of teak. But they have a nice grain. They're lightweight. They're easy to move around. They're not gigantic. Now this is Drexel Declaration. Kip Stewart was the designer, and these white knobs are very important. I had a client who had this, and she said, oh, it's an $800 piece. It was a small console, and I said, only if we can find the other knob. And she never could find the other knob, and no one would ever buy it. Modernists want things to be complete and in great shape. It was an era of machined perfection, and the collectors now expect a lot of that. This is cool. I can't imagine they're going to get $600 for it, though. But it makes me want to take mine out of storage and unwind it and hang it up in my space. But there are some good deals on furniture, too. This is a nice-looking piece here, 450 It just has a nice modernist design. Now, there could be bargains down these middle shelves if there's anything old, or even in the vintage range. This is a treasure craft cookie jar, for example. Because this was the beginning of the modern era of cookie jars, it looks like a modern cookie jar sold by J.C. Penney's. They were a big buyer for treasure craft. This might be priced cheaply because of that. Let's take a look. Oh, but this is when they had moved off to Mexico. And ultimately, they lost the contract with J.C. Penney's because it was no longer American-made. That was a big mistake that Ballscraft made. Excellent original. Yes, it is. Nice lava glaze. This is Treasure Craft. $36 they have on that. Okay, I really, really, really like the bar. It's just very straightforward. It's got those great old wheels right out of about 1970. It even has one of my decanters on it, and that's only $8. And if this plays music, I'll be getting it for $8. Ah, yes, it plays. That's wonderful. Okay, well, that will go up with me. Now let's see if the bar is such a great deal. Three twenty-five. dollars you know. In Florida, that could easily double. It is tempting. It's a little big. And it looks like it folds, but unfortunately, now that I look at the construction in the back, I don't think it's very good quality. We might be a little out of season here for these, since it's 14 degrees just north of here. But it is a sweltering 30, so maybe you could pull this out. This is a great set. It is not cheap, 675. But very good clean upholstery from the 1970 era. Roy Hill Brasilia, this is a really great piece. I was not expecting to see good designer modernism in here. This is a nice surprise. And this one has those wonderful turned up handles. Not cheap, $1,700, but you would expect that for this. And then here is a. 1960s slightly curved couch and an interesting brown brocade that is sold. Let's find out how much it went for. I'm never shy about scooping at sold tags because that's how you learn. So this got marked down to 210 from an original price of 250 and that's what it took to move it. Somebody will have fun with that. Royal China did this blue heaven pattern. It's hard to find the glasses in good shape because the paint would wear off. I have a bunch of this I need to put out for sale. And i got to get on that because it is a fun modernist pattern that people will buy still. And you see prices anywhere from $8 on plates and tumblers to about $12 on soup bowls. So it's not super expensive, but it is neat. Very modernist. And some pieces say Blue Heaven by Royal China. And some pieces, especially the tumblers, do not. So you know would be telling me to buy all of these lamps, at least the glass ones. Another one of these double sinks that are very useful for outdoor bar service, but this one's priced at $250. People have caught on to that. Darn, all my best ideas. <laughs> this is Adrian Pearsall also, this squarish club chair. All of these prices they're advertising with upholstery, so what I think it is is that they're finding these pieces here, but they don't want to take them all to Chicago to have it done. So you get to purchase it and then they will have the upholstery done for you. 
Well, I know it's after the season, but for $12, I guess I'm putting Santa away. We'll see how much the candy canes are and when they're from. Well, there's only 350 shopping days until Christmas, but at half off, these are just going to have to be set aside for next year. Do you agree? I thought so. These were very popular in the 70s, where you would put your ice in there, and it would keep your wine chilled. That was when people were a little less sophisticated about whether you were supposed to chill wine in the first place. But it was cute. Occupy Japan, that's $8. That's a cute little zebra. They've got lots of cute here. But they've got a variety of things, so I thought it was worth taking a look here. The little Roseville piece has a chip, so does the Francoma. Italian glass indeed, but it's 55, so I'm going to leave that. On this shelf, there's cute bookends with the Liberty Bell for 35 about the right price, a Nylok base, but I like this piece. This is Cloisonne, and they have $15 on it, and I think it seems to be very well done and have some age. If there's no damage, oh, but there is. Look at that. What a shame. That was going to be a really great deal up until then. Disney World Scratcher with Mickey Mouse, but that's $15. These flashlights with the bullet shape do well. It's an old ray of back, but that one's so worn through, I think we'll leave it. Great 50 slant, great spaghetti shade. Mid Century Vase 18. This looks like a Madeline original. And there's the label. Has sort of the feel of Sasha Brastoff, but it's lightweight comparatively. Wow, Roseville Futura, that's a fantastic piece for three seventy five. That's not a terrible price. That is Roseville with paper labels, if anything. But it had such an art deco feel. And this was the most floral of all of the pieces of Futura. They got even more amazing from there. Pine cone, very popular pattern still. This is really cool. It's a veneer, a thousand members as of 1915. For the commandery of, I believe, that is Knights of Columbus. One twenty-five for the Weller. The Bashful Charlotte is sixty-five. They have nice things. The prices are just fine. I'm not finding anything I can afford on this shelf, but I do like showing this. This is Vasa Marina by Fenton. That's sixty-five. Not a bad deal either. Blackberry is a hard-to-find pattern in Roseville as well. Yeah, there's a bunch of miscellaneous stuff in here, but I see some olive wood carvings from the Holy Land. Only $40 for the purple decanter, and is in Poli. It's a great color, but it says as is, and I see a crack right there. Unfortunate. Let's see what else. This is a Fenton piece, and it's older because it's got a real opalescent fire to it when you hold it up. So this is 40s Fenton with the pointy hobnails, and... Oh, let's see if we can flip that tag. Seventeen dollars. Little Inesco little girl figures there. I like the sort of grandma floral ice bucket, but it says the lid is not snug, so that's not going to work. I like these little novelty crocheted little hot pads and privets, made to look like little dresses. Made to be the his and hers with the bloomers. They're just very sweet and nicey prices between about three and four and eight dollars on these. Fun collection, fun display for a wall. They even have this jumper here. Various milk cans, fifty dollars on the larger, but the smaller one is actually more interesting. It is a creamery. In case of no loss, no defy Blue Valley Creamery Company. Alfred Collision, Whiting, Iowa. A very, very orange Hager piece here. Jumps right out at me. And they have $14 on that ewer. Hmm. I have to say, for that price, in that color, it's got a little bit of wear on the edge, but I might just have to take that. Here's the green Sharon pattern. Not an elegant glass pattern. This is a regular depression glass pattern. You don't see it in green as often as you do in amber and pink, but this green is more of a mint green and not as likely to fluoresce because they weren't getting that yellowy green to it. 
This is part of a 1930s console set. This is apple juice Bakelite. I misidentified root beer as apple juice recently. Root beer is a little darker, but this is the apple juice because look at the color. These are by Farberware. These are from the 1930s. There was a console bowl that went with it. They're asking 35 for just the candles, which is about the right price. Well, I've got to say this is a fun store. I'm putting some things up at the counter, and I hope you're having fun too. And if you are, please click that thumbs up button to like this video. Please do check out our membership packages. If you are interested in joining, it will tell you the different perks and things that you get at the different tiers. And please subscribe if you haven't, because that doesn't cost anything. And then you can click that bell to be notified about future videos and stick together. We'll have lots more fun in the future. Here's another 1920 vintage Lloyd Loom wicker piece. I like the high back. The coloration was deliberate. You see they even did a little color band in here. They have marked this down to $90, which I think is a really good price. It could use a little bit of cleaning up, but honestly, for that price, it seems like a good deal. This is a cute little set here, $275, the wrought iron table and chairs with that original upholstery and the avocado and gold and orange. Oh, there's some more Santa stuff that is half off, but these look like mainly newer pieces. Can't touch the bowl molds, even at half off. Glamour lights, well, those look like they're kind of cute in a cute enough box, but I'm sure they don't work because one is missing. And back then, if one was missing, you were dead. Fun 70s wall hanging here in the shag carpeting. This is Harry Hilson and is known for the design, $450. Absolutely 1970s. Look up Harry Hilson, and it's an interesting story. I like these kinds of sta stacking tables. George Riard did things like this, but these have a little bit of cracking. And because of that, I'm going to steer clear, even though 130 seems like an okay price, and I could use them for display. This is a very famous lamp. This is a cage lamp by Guy Lamas Lotari. It's an Italian design from about the mid to late 60s. Very genie-ish with the shape, and look at the teak at the bottom. This one is priced at eight fifty, and this was very modern in the early seventies when this was made. This is Jack Lenore Larson, and it was custom built for Roxy Furniture Mart. So they were definitely trying to be as cutting edge as possible back when this was made, and it's twenty one hundred dollars now. It's really a cool look. This whole space is a really cool look. I like the wall mask. The big Mexican tiki face, which has some age, is 175. I love the spaghetti shaded pole lamp, and this one is 450, which these days you would expect. And yet, I see some fish on the wall that look pretty affordable. Let's go see them. Okay, well, we've got the fish with the bubbles here. This is the interesting one. The resin wall fish don't do anything for me. Let's see what his price is. This is. $20 for the set. It is Miller Studio. It will be marked on the side, probably under my thumb. I don't want to break it, so I'm just going to hang him back up. He didn't have chips. I would take him for $20 because the bubbles are hard to find, especially in the large size. These two ducks chairs are really good. These are an Olsen design, so they are Scandinavian modern. They definitely have the similar aspect to the Papa Bear chair. But these value pretty similarly. Uh, 2200 they're asking on the white one, 3400 on the recliner on the left. I do really like this hooked rug with the blue floral. That looks like something out of the 1940s. It's just really sweet the way it was done. That was folk art and home art at the time, but they are really attractive now and very collectible. Next to it, a nice 1930s Chinese rug. Uh, they say 1800s. I, I, don't think so because of the way that it's glued together in the middle and the backing. But if someone knows more about that than I do, please tell me. I, I'm not going to lie. I always liked these, but the quality was never that great with the plastic liner for the stoppers and they were made for commercial purposes. So I never imagined that someday these would be selling for as much as Blanco. We have prices of 135 175 185 and I know it's true. It's amazing how certain things that are not as regarded in one generation become the thing that the generation that grew up with them remembers. 
Well, I did find some bargains in there and I found some really great mid-century. It was really fun to look at that. They had some good designers, some really nice pieces. They even had a picture of David Bromstad from HGTV who had been into the mall and hung out and shopped around. So I know that they have interesting things and they're appealing to some serious designers. And I realized a lot of the modernism was priced that way. But I was disappointed because I found one piece and asked if I could get a 10% discount and was told, oh, no, that's a very good price for what it is because it's a signed piece. And I have to say, I can look on eBay just like anyone else. And it was priced a little bit more than I really would want to pay wholesale and 10% would have made a difference. So I ended up leaving it. Oh, well, can't have everything. But nonetheless, I had a lot of fun at Heart and Soul Treasures. I bought a bunch of Christmas stuff to put away for next year and some other things. And now it is down the road and on to Florida. In the meanwhile, if you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.